lectures so far, we have uh, seen, and by now you must be comfortable with the concept of equation of motion and how the right component of equation mo of motion can be used to derive the governing equation for flow, uh, for flow in, in, any, in a channel or along a tube or in any other complicated geometry, both in one dimension and in some special cases in two dimensions in which analytic solution solutions are possible and uh, in all other cases one has to resort to numerical solution techniques. So, before we finally leave this chapter behind, uh, I would quickly show you a result, a specific case which would have applications in the subsequent chapter that uh, we are going to get into. This so far all the problems, all the situations that we have dealt with uh, they are steady in, the flow is steady in nature. That means, the velocity at any given location does not change with time, but there will be many cases which uh, in which the velocity can be a function of time. So, the if you, if you fix the location, the velocity at that location can also change. So, I am going to give you just one example of unsteady state motion in which a compact closed form solution is possible. There are numerous other cases, uh, each involving uh, more uh, complicated mathematics or numerical techniques that would give you the value of the values of velocity at a given location in unsteady flow. So, in order to, uh, in order to analyze the simplest possible problem, in one of the simple problems in unsteady flow, we think of the situation in which we have a plate and on top of the plate we have a layer, a large layer of liquid. So, initially the, the plate and the fluid above it are at rest, both are at rest. So, at t less than equal to 0, the velocity is of the fluid is 0 everywhere. But at t equals 0, suddenly the bottom plate adjoining the fluid is set into motion with a constant velocity v. So, as time progresses, the presence of the moving, moving solid, moving solid boundary uh, will be felt at a greater depth of the, of the liquid. So, initially when the plate starts to move, only the layer very close to the solid surface will sense that the solid plate has started to move. But as time progresses, the thickness of the effect of the motion of the solid plate will penetrate more and more into greater depths, in this case greater heights of the liquid. So, this would create a condition in which the flow is not only going to be a function of y, which is the distance from the, from the, from the plate, but also it is going to be a function of time. How much time has elapsed? before this the measurement of velocity at a given y has been has been done. So, it is the velocity in the x direction in the direction of motion of the plate is going to be a function both of y and time. Uh, we, we realize that uh, the plate velocity is not too large therefore, the laminarity of the flow will still be maintained and once the once the plate starts to move, it, it will try to drag the fluid with it because of viscosity. So, it is a viscous flow, it is a one dimensional flow in which the non vanishing component of velocity is v x in the x direction, there is no v y and, and obviously, there is no v z. And since it is just a pool of liquid above a solid plate, and all the motion is initiated because of the motion of the bottom plate. Therefore, there is no pressure gradient and since the fluid and the solid plate they are horizontal. So, there is no effect of gravity as well. So, when you think of the process, it is a two dimension, it is it, it, it's, it's, it's a problem, it is an unsteady state problem in which the velocity is the only the x component of velocity is present, which is a function of y as well as a function of time. We, we need, we are trying to see if what kind of a solution we can, uh, we can obtain for a situation like this. So, I will uh, draw the first uh, 
scenario in which this being the solid plate and the time is less than 0, this is the y direction and I have a liquid in here. So, at t less than 0, there is no velocity that means, the velocity of the solid plate is equal to 0. So, velocity of the liquid velocity of the liquid is 0 for all y. So, at any point the velocity would be equal to 0. The second scenario is at t equal to 0. So, this is t less than 0 at t equals 0 the wall is set in motion with a velocity v naught. So, I have now this is moving with some velocity and this is still my y and the velocity over here is v 0. Then, then comes the third part where again this same wall has some time has passed it is moving with a velocity equal to v naught and I have the same y in here and the layer. So, this is this is the case of unsteady flow. The velocity of the plate is v naught and what you are going to see in here is the velocity uh, of a layer just above it will be slightly less than v naught over here it is going to be even lesser and till a point is come. So, this is the point where the velocity is still 0. So, I have the velocity profile something like this. So, this is my velocity profile which is a function of y as well as it is a function of t. So, this is t greater than 0. So, if you look at the three situations that I have drawn over here, this is the initial condition where the velocity is 0 and therefore, the velocity of the adjoining liquid is also 0. At t equal to 0, the wall is set in motion with a constant velocity v naught, the liquid is still stationary. So, you have the liquid which is still stationary, but as time progresses t greater than 0, an unsteady flow pattern sets in to the adjoining liquid with the velocity being maximum due to no slip condition, the velocity at this point at the solid liquid interface is going to be equal to v naught, but as we move deeper and deeper into the fluid, the velocity decreases and at some distance and some point the velocity will come to 0. So, that means from this point onwards the velocity of the fluid is 0 and the fluid here does not know that a moving plate exists at some distance from it. Now, you can clearly see that as time progresses when t becomes quite large the penetration depth of the effect of the plate will keep on increasing and the velocity profile will also be different. So, the velocity profile and the penetration depth of the effect of the solid plate of the motion of the solid plate will be felt at a higher distance as time progresses. So, this is definitely an unsteady flow problem and you would like to see if we can get an analytic solution for or a closed form solution for, for this specific case. So, what we are going to do first is we are first going to write the governing equation for this, for this specific case. Now, when we write the governing equation, we keep in mind that there is only one component of velocity v x, v y is 0, v z is equal to 0 and v x does not vary in the x direction. So, if you think about the Navier-Stokes equation, the Cartesian coordinate system in the x direction because the x is the direction in which the flow takes place, the first term is del v x del t. Now, the 
Previously, in all, pre in all our previous cases, since we were dealing with steady state, del V x del t was set equal to 0. There is a rho outside, so rho times del V x del t, that term will not, cannot be, cannot be neglected in here. All the other terms either contain V y or V z or it would contain del V x del x. So, the second term on the left hand side of Navier Stokes equation which is V x del V x del x is 0 since del V x del x is 0. The third and the fourth term which contain V y and V z since both are equal to 0 the entire left hand side only term which will remain is the unsteady state term which is rho times del V x del t. Now, we come to the right hand side of Navier Stokes equation. The right hand side of the Navier Stokes equation the first term is the, the, the gradient in the surface force and principally we are talking about the pressure, the applied pressure. And since it is a case of a plate which is, be, which is moving in a static liquid with no applied pressure in the direction of flow. So, del p del x, del p del x the first term on the right hand side of Navier Stokes equation would be 0. Then comes the viscous terms. The viscous terms are viscosity mu times del square V x by del x square which is 0 since V x does not vary with x del square V x by del y square which denotes the transport of molecular momentum viscous momentum in a direction perpendicular to the motion motion in the x direction that means in the y direction del square V x by del y square that term must be present in the governing equation because that is the term which accounts for the motion of the plates above motion of the layers of the fluid above the plate. So, entire flow is caused by the viscous interaction of the layers one on top of the other. So, mu times del square V x by del y square should remain in the governing equation. The third term would be mu times del square V x by del z square and since V x does not vary with z that term can also be dropped. The last remaining term of Navier Stokes equation in this case would be rho times G x where G suffix x denotes the component the gravity component in the x direction which this system being a horizontal system would be equal to 0. So, the entire right hand side of Navier Stokes equation the pressure term is 0, the body force term is 0, one term only one term of the viscous transport will survive which is mu times del square V x by del y square. So, your entire governing equation now becomes rho times del V x del t is equal to mu times del square V x by del y square. So, that is our governing equation and now since you know how to use Navier Stokes equation it is quite easy to do that simply by looking and cancelling the terms that are not relevant in the present scenario. So, I am going to write the governing equation for this case. So, the governing equation for this case would simply be del V x del t is equal to nu times del square V x by del y square where this nu is defined as mu by rho the in it's it the entry this is called the kinematic viscosity now if you look at the units of the kinematic viscosity nu you would see that it's going to be in meter square per second now this meter square per second has some significance because um, you would see later on that all the transport coefficients for example when we when we talk about fick's law the transport coefficient there was dab which is the diffusion coefficient which has also meter square units of meter square by second so in mass transfer the transport coefficient has units of meter square per second and when you uh, when you look into the heat transfer, I will introduce that later, but there is a term k by rho C p 
which also has units of meter square per second. So, this is called the mass diffusivity, this is called the momentum diffusivity and this is called the thermal diffusivity. So, this is this nu is essentially the momentum diffusivity. So, the momentum diffusivity nu it has units of meter square per second similar exactly similar to the mass diffusivity which is denoted by d a b has units of meter square per second and thermal diffusivity which has units of meter square per second. So, if when we talk about transport coefficients when we discuss about the term transport coefficients we do not talk only about viscosity, but it is rather viscosity by rho also denoted by nu or k by rho C p the thermal diffusivity generally denoted by alpha and d a b which is it all of them has units of meter square per second. So, this is kinematic viscosity, this is thermal diffusivity kinematic viscosity or momentum diffusivity, thermal diffusivity and mass diffusivity. So, when we talk about transport coefficients which are important in describing the flow of momentum, the flow of conductive flow of heat or the conductive flow of a species from one point to another due to the presence of a concentration gradient. We talk in terms of diffusivity, the, the momentum diffusivity and the thermal diffusivity not just mu, it is mu by rho which is important, not just k the thermal conductivity, it is k by rho C p which is important and which dictates what is going to be the rate at which momentum trans momentum gets transported from one point to the other, the heat gets transported or the species mass gets transported, transported from one to the other. So, when you talk about transport coefficients, transport parameters defining the flow of momentum, heat or mass, we generally talk in terms of diffusivity, all of which will have units of meter square per second. But anyway, coming back to the problem, this specific uh, equation has an, in, an initial condition which says that T less than equal to 0, V x is 0 for all y. So, this is essentially the first figure which I have drawn that is T less than equal to first and second figure. So, this T less than equal to 0 V x is 0 for all y and the boundary condition 1 is at y equals 0 V x is equal to V 0 for all T greater than 0. That means, at y equal to 0 the V x will always be equal to V 0 or the velocity of the top plate due to the no slip condition for any t greater than 0. And the second boundary condition, so the boundary condition 1 refers to this region and the boundary condition 2 refers to this region which says that as mathematically speaking when as y a tends to infinity then V x is equal to 0 for all t greater than 0. So, these three are the initial and the boundary conditions which we must use to solve this, this PDE, which are a statement of the statement of the uh, of the our physical understanding of the of the system. So, first thing that we would do is we will we'll, uh, denote a dimensionless velocity as V x by V naught. Therefore, the governing equation would simply be del psi by del t is equal to nu times del square psi by del y square and we call this as our equation 1. And the, the re reduced the changed boundary conditions in this case would be phi at y 0 time would be 0 since v x is 0 that is one condition phi at y equal to 0 for any value of t is equal to 1 due to no slip condition on the solid liquid and that phi 
for y equals infinity at any time greater than 0 would be 0. That means, the effect of the motion of the solid plate has not penetrated beyond this distance. And uh, since it is infinite distance, no matter whatever be the time, the, the fluid over here at, a, at an infinite very large distance from the plate will never know that the plate has started to move. So, these are the three conditions that we need to use to solve the governing equation. Now, how can we solve that? That is the next question. I will quickly write the equation once again just for our reference which is del psi by del t is equal to nu times del square psi by del y square that is my governing equation and the boundary conditions are y is at time 0 is 0, phi at y equals 0 for any time greater than 0 is equal to 1 and phi at infinite time infinite distance any time greater than 0 is going to be equal to 0. Now, here we see that the independent variable is phi sorry dependent variable is phi and the corresponding independent variables are t and y. So, we if we could express some function of t and y in such a way that that new defined variable the combination variable of t and y can express can be substituted in here to obtain an expression only in terms of phi and the new variable which is the sum sort of a combination between t and y. So, I, I would show you uh, what it is how it can be done this phi is dependent variable and independent in two variables are t and y. So, I, I am trying to find out a dimension less combination of independent variables and the independent variables are t and y. I use eta which is the new dimensionless variable this is y by root over nu times t. So, what we see what we see here is that my partial differential equation I need to resolve the partial differential equation by an ordinary differential equation. What I see is that my independent my dependent variable is a dimensionless quantity which is phi which is simply the velocity at any y and at any t divided by v naught which is where v naught is the constant is the velocity constant velocity of the moving plate. The in the dependent variable phi it, there are two independent variables one is what is the distance of the point of consideration from the solid plate that is y and the second independent variable is how much time has has elapsed after the the plate has started to move. So, y and t if these two independent variables can be combined in a specific way yet to be determined way. So, that two independent variables are merged are combined into one variable and that independent that independent variable the new independent variable in itself is dimensionless then my phi is not a not is not a function of y and t phi is a function only of that combination variable. So, instead of two independent variables instead of the dependence of phi on two independent variables which makes the equation a partial differential equation what I am proposing is I am merging these two combining these two into one variable. So, therefore, phi is now a function of only one variable. So, when phi is a function of only one variable the equation no longer remains a partial differential equation it will become a, an ordinary differential equation. So, that is what is our goal to, to, to define a new independent variable in such a way that the combination variable becomes dimensionless 
and the combination variable when we, it is substituted in the main governing equation all those y and t they will disappear they will cancel from each sides what that equation ideally should have finally is phi and the and the new combined variable if that happens then I do not have a partial differential equation, I just have an ordinary differential equation. So, this method of resolving partial differential equations into ordinary differential equations is known as the combination of variables. So, the new combination variable is defined as eta equals y by root over nu, root over nu times t and uh, what you get then is I am going to substitute this in here. So, my del psi by del t is I can express it as d psi by d eta times del eta by del t, which del eta by del t would simply be equals to minus half eta by t d phi by d eta. Similarly, del psi by del y would simply be equals d psi by d d eta times del eta by del y, which would be equal to d psi by d eta times 1 by root over 4 nu t and del 2 psi by del y square would be equal to d 2 psi by d eta times 1 by root over 4 nu t times del psi by del y. So, this would be d 2 psi by d eta square times 1 by root over 4 t and again another 1 by root over 4 nu t because of this. So, as ultimately what you would get is uh, d 2 psi by sorry del 2 psi by del y square would be equal to d 2 psi by d eta square times 1 by root 1 by 4 nu t. When all of this substituted into my previous equation, equation 1, the equation 1 becomes this. And the important point to note here is that my phi is a function of only eta. So, it is an ordinary differential equation, it is no longer a partial differential equation and the two boundary conditions are at eta equals 0, remember eta is defined as y by root over 4 nu t. So, at eta equals 0, phi is equal to 1 and the boundary condition 2 is at eta equals infinity, phi is equal to 0. So, phi this is in the initial condition plus the boundary condition 2 of uh, my previous uh, discussion and this is simply boundary condition 1. So, this now becomes easy to integrate. First, you have to just define that uh, d psi by d eta is equal to some other d phi by d eta is some other function which is now the in which is going to be the integration factor and the integrate when, when you do this integration factor then this is simply going to be d psi by d eta which is equal to c 1 exponential minus eta square which is essentially uh, class 12 uh, calculus and once you substitute once you integrate it once you would get from 0 to infinity exponential minus eta square d eta plus c 2. So, c 1 and c 2 are the constants of integration. So, once again phi is going to be c 1 from 0 to eta exponential minus eta square d eta plus c 2 and the boundary conditions are at eta equals 0 phi equals 1 and eta equals infinity phi is equal to 0. These are the two conditions. So, let us first use this condition and then what you get is 1 is equal to c 2 and then when you use this equation you are simply going to get c 1 as 1 by from 0 to infinity exponential minus eta square d eta. So, your final equation which is a phi which is a function of eta is simply going to be 
0 to eta exponential minus eta square d eta by 0 to infinity exponential minus eta square d eta. This part it has a, is a, has a special name this is called the error function. So, this is called the error function then your phi eta is simply going to be 1 minus which is v x y and t divided by v naught is 1 minus error function eta where eta is y by root over 4 nu t. So, this is a compact expression in terms of a known mathematical function which is error which is error function and there is one more property of error function which I must say before I conclude this again this is v x y t by v naught is 1 minus error function y by root over 4 nu t. The, the, the property of error function is when eta tends to 2 this entire thing is eta the error function eta tends to a value equal to 1. So, the in you would see that this has this would give rise to a value of v x y t to be approximately equal to 0. So, this this value of eta equals to eta equals 2 which would give you delta equals 4 times nu t delta is essentially the y. This would be a natural length scale to define what is going to be the distance at which the effect of the plate can be felt by the fluid. So, we would get an error function solution in this specific case and the behavior of error function is when when eta is when eta is close to 2 then the value of error function is equal to 1 and the velocity becomes equal to 0. So, it is a combination of time and distance which would give you an idea of the penetration depth of the effect of the motion of the plate below it and beyond that point there is no effect of the motion of the bottom plate. So, this is essentially giving you an idea of the effect at a specific location and at a specific point of time. Okay. So, this is just one example of uh, use the solution or the treatment of an unsteady state problem when uh, the velocity is a function of one variable, one space variable and time as well. But it is also giving us some, some idea that there exists a large regi region of the fluid where the motion is not felt at all. So, this is what is giving us the concept of something which is known as boundary layer which I will introduce in the next class.